Hello, hello, and welcome to Martinis and Bikinis, the podcast for everything under the sun. I am your hostess, Veronica Julia, and I am here to help you navigate your 20s through all things lifestyle, beauty, and fashion. So if you're ready, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Martinis and Bikinis. I'm your hostess, Veronica Julia, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about 2024 and New Year's resolutions. I feel like this is going to be the most common topic when it comes to podcast or social media content, whatever. But I feel like it's always kind of repeat tips and ideas and practices. And I actually found something really cool that I want to share with you guys that I'm going to implement into my year. So it's going to be a quick episode today. But I just felt like this was so just helpful and it kind of takes the pressure off of New Year's and resolutions and hitting your goals so much. So I'm excited to share the wealth and the knowledge. So something that I actually really love is writing a letter to myself every year. I actually stole this, but I went to this health and wellness retreat in Mexico a few years ago. And on the retreat, we wrote a letter to ourselves and it was actually shipped to us, mailed to us six months later. So I don't know if you guys have ever been on a retreat before, but I feel like I always leave them feeling so inspired and full of gratitude, but also with so much motivation to just keep pushing towards my goals. So I remember reading my first letter that I wrote to myself six months later, and I had accomplished every single thing that I had set myself out to do, which was so nuts. I had started my first business. I had had all these accolades that I just didn't think that were possible. And I feel like whenever you literally put things onto paper or you kind of have this subconscious realization of all these things that you are totally capable of doing, it really makes a huge difference. So I know manifestation is something I talk about a lot. And, you know, some people might think it's woo woo or, you know, overspoken about, but I truly think that there are modalities and practices that you can do to make sure that your manifestations actually are accomplished and happen. So I love writing letters to myself now. And at the beginning of the year, I write a letter to myself and I essentially will wait until the year after, read it out loud to myself and I will start crying because I'm like, what on earth? This is so nuts. And you get to see all of the growth that you've had over the past year. But at the same time, you also just like look back on that younger version of yourself and you admire the absolute hell out of her because you're just like, or him, whoever's listening. And you're just like, oh my gosh, like she didn't even know what was coming. She had literally no fucking clue that she was even capable of doing this. Maybe she was in a vulnerable state. Maybe he was in a vulnerable state and just didn't feel like he or she had the knowledge to continue or keep pushing or to even like accomplish whatever it is that you accomplish throughout the year, or even if it's the most like small, like simple thing that you were able to set yourself out to do, like, hell yeah. You know, I feel like small actionable steps are so underrated. So just having a moment to reflect and be super proud of yourself is so important. So I will write a letter to myself and it doesn't matter the length, like whatever you want to write, you could literally draw on it. You could make like a list, whatever, or you could really just like tell you, tell, tell you how it is, you know? So I remember one letter, I was like, so fucking mean to myself. I was like, Veronica, you better have fucking started that business. Veronica, you better have done this. And you know, it's kind of funny just because you read it in like this different mindset and you're just like, okay, I clearly had some things I needed to work through and here I am. So number one, write a letter to yourself. I think that's super important. I also love vision boarding. I know that's definitely hyped and something that people do, but I think there's definitely ways that you can implement it to not just make a vision board and then, you know, never look at it again. 
the way that I like to do vision boards, I either like to do it in like an arts and crafts style, like make a poster, magazine clippings, like the whole nine yards, even print out some pictures from Pinterest, whatever, and have it in a place where I look at it every single day. So even if you're not even paying attention to what you're looking at every single day, your brain starts to recognize that as like your reality. So I swear it works. Also, if you want to do it digitally, I'll go on Canva and I'll upload some photos from Pinterest and I'll just make it into a Canva template. I'll put it as my phone background. I actually have my vision board as my phone background right now from last year. So that's something that's really helpful. Something that you can literally look at every single day. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm interested to see what I've accomplished. Oh my God. This is so funny. I think as a content creator, vision boards are really funny because I like have like multiple photos that look identical to this on my Instagram feed. But, you know, I think it's amazing that, you know, you kind of just don't even realize that you're absorbing this information or those visuals. So anyway, I have this new technique and I actually got it from this girl on TikTok, but her and her friend make like a monthly plan for New Year's resolutions. So as opposed to having just, you know, some sporadic random resolutions that you need to apply over the span of a year, maybe bulking it into months and maybe batching it in ways where you can just accomplish certain tasks or certain goals each month is, you know, kind of a way for you to organize it and make it more attainable. So I absolutely love this because it kind of gives you excitement for each month. But at the same time, you can implement practical things that are associated with that time of year. So I'll read mine out to you guys. And maybe you can get some inspiration from it. So you can make your own. But I really, really loved this because I'm somebody that will have like a New Year's resolution. And not that I like fall back on my old habits, but I really like to be experimental, like even with like my workouts or, you know, even socially, like going to new events or with, you know, educating myself. Like I like to just like try new things. That's just how my brain functions. I get bored otherwise. So I love how you can kind of just like play and I'm all about the inner child. So like making something that seems so serious, like a little bit more playful and fun is just so key. So January. I feel like obviously everybody is back home or wherever and you're probably eating a lot and enjoying yourself and spending time with friends, maybe going out a bit with some hometown friends. At least that's what I do. I always go back to reality and I feel like I just really want to nourish my body and like move my body and get back into a routine. So in January, I have fitness, but I want to try new workouts now that I'm in New York. So going to new group fitness classes or, you know, even going to the gym and like trying workouts on my own that like I've never done before. I've always seen those girls that use like the seat at the gym as like their own Pilates reformer. I'm going to try that because it looks really hard, but I also don't think I have the balls right now to like go into the gym and like bust that out. So I feel like that is like a whole new level of confidence, like going to the gym and like trying something new. So I really want to focus on fitness and just like having fun with it, not necessarily like feeling this like immense need to have these like certain aesthetic goals, but like just, you know, playing, just seeing what I come up with, making a custom approach to it. Then in February, I want to focus on my finances. I've had a lot of people reach out to me about having a financial expert on the podcast and talk about like budgeting and finances in your 20s and navigating that. So I have somebody coming on in January, which I'm so excited about. You're going to love her. And I feel like after that conversation, I'm going to learn so much. So I'd love to implement finances into February and just learn how I can be more fiscally responsible but also like make more money, maybe like get another side hustle, who knows. March, I want to focus on entrepreneurship and business pursuits. So March is obviously like the start of spring and I have a new collection coming out for Noah the Collective, my spoonware line. So that's going to be like kind of uh, like bustling time for me. So I'm really going to have to hustle, but 
I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to that time of year. And I feel like it's a time for me to like grow the podcast as well and kind of have that symmetry between all my businesses and be able to like implement some cool marketing techniques and events and advertising. So super excited for that. April, I really want to focus on friendship and connection. So I feel like April is like the time where everybody like comes out of their hibernation. And I really just want to socialize. And I'm a member of some museums here in New York. So, you know, go to some galas or events and just like, feel like, just chic. Like, <laughs> I really just like want to have fun. And just hone in on my friendships, especially before the summer. I feel like everybody kind of leaves for the summer and they travel. And yeah, I feel like that's a good time to just have that intentional friend time. May, I really want to focus on philanthropy this year. So whether that's volunteering or, you know, implementing some new things with Beyond the Lens Project, which is the nonprofit that I'm on the board of directors for. It's in memory of my nephew, Philip. If you haven't heard of it, go check it out. I actually talked about it for my Giving Tuesday episode. So you can go back and learn a little bit more about that. You can also go to our website, beyondthelensproject.org. But yeah, I really want to like focus on helping other people, especially like right before the summer. I feel like it's a good time just to kind of help other people and serve your communities. So I'm excited for that. June, I really want to be spontaneous in June and just kind of like fly by the seat of my own pants, like not really have a plan and be adventurous and literally not put anything on my calendar until the month starts because I just want to like be flowing and kind of like a little free spirit. So I'm excited for June. I feel like that's like the start of summer and everybody's just really excited. So I just want to like do something really, really out, out the box, like really nuts. I know that that's usually whenever Miami swim week is. So that might be like the only thing on my schedule. But other than that, who knows, maybe I'll end up on a yacht in Miami and then like get flown out to like Dubai. <laughs> so we'll see. July, I really want to be in nature. So whether that's hiking a ton, or maybe I'm traveling somewhere, or, you know, maybe even just going on Central Park walks if I'm in the city or being on the water. I absolutely love like just being out in nature it's so good for your oxygen levels and grounding and oh my god it's the best and I feel like it's kind of hard to come by here in the city so I really want to like maybe even go upstate or find some other locations where I can be out in nature and I have some friends here that are like super outdoorsy and I actually am very outdoorsy if I don't know if anybody's surprised by that Probably so, because I feel like I love going to parties and drinking martinis. But at the same time, like I love obviously like being out in nature and hiking and biking and being in the water, all the things. Snowboarding. I love snowboarding, which I can't do in July, but <laughs> I'm actually going this winter, so I'm excited. But August, I really want to travel. So this year I did a month long solo vacation and Actually, for part of it, I was with my mom. And at the end, I was with some friends. But in the middle, I was completely alone in Spain. So I really want to take the month off again, do a little sabbatical and just travel in August again. That was so much fun. And I felt so cultured and I learned so much about myself. It was great for self-awareness, meeting new people, having new experiences. It was amazing. September, I really want to just read and educate myself. So whether that's like joining a book club or, you know, kind of creating like a goal of like how many books I want to read or just finding new ways to educate myself, whether that's investing in a course or in a coach or, you know, something along the lines of that. In October, I really want to be creative. I feel like that's like Halloween, fall time. Like I either want to like sign up for painting classes or get really creative with like my Halloween costumes, have like fun parties, maybe like host, who knows. November, I really want to focus on wellness, health and beauty. So not even just like health in terms of like fitness, but like, you know, making sure I'm getting all my doctor's appointments and maybe doing some like really interesting, like functional medicine tests. I've really been wanting to do that recently, like a full panel test. I also just like want to really embrace like spa services. You guys know I love that shit, but you know, really experiment and have fun. 
And then in December, I really want to focus on family and mindfulness. I feel like December is like a difficult time for a lot of people, you know, whether they've lost family members or, you know, they're going through seasonal depression or, you know, it's kind of just that time of year when you really are a little bit more introspective. So I feel like just really focusing on mindfulness and gratitude and family time and finding things to be grateful for is so important. So, you know, whether that's going on a trip with my family for Christmas next year instead of going home or, you know, maybe even inviting like our more extended family over for Christmas or, you know, spending time with my little cousin, taking her shopping, like who knows? I don't know. I feel like just having that like intentional family time and being grateful for what you have is so important around this time of year. So yeah. Anyway, I would love to hear how you guys implement this into your New Year's resolutions. So let me know if you do this. I'm super excited to hear what you guys have in store. But remember to like, rate, and subscribe to this podcast if you liked this episode. And I hope you guys have an incredible, happy, healthy, and hot New Year. And I love you. And we'll talk soon. Bye. Truly, most of the time you are not there for no reason and you're not where you are for no reason and you have to just remind yourself that and that's what I remind myself and then I feel a little bit better. Think of what you can do to just slow down your heart rate, make yourself feel a little better, going on a walk, meditating, Pilates class. You're manifesting, you're setting yourself up to start that journey of whatever you're manifesting.